just gotten a chance to finally play The Witcher 3 after many years. Uh, now, if I'm right, you haven't actually played one or two, right? This is a new I thing I have played two. You have played two. Yes. Oh, okay, great. I didn't finish two because, let's be honest, it's a long, long game. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, I mean, first off, I mean, you're in the midst of Dragon Age as well. What are, what are you thinking right now, getting your, your hands on it? I think that RPGs are just such a deep, immersive, rich experience, and... I think Dragon Age really set a new bar with everything they did with Inquisition. Obviously, it won a lot of Game of the Year awards from a lot of people. And The Witcher 3 was on my most anticipated list for 2015 because I do love a really great RPG. And just playing today makes me so excited to get the full game and really put some time in because it's so hard when you have such a short sliver of time with a game. If you can call three hours a short yeah. sliver well, of time. Well, that's the thing. Like, we played for three hours and I feel like I did nothing. I did yeah. not like I like I almost feel like I have nothing to say because I almost did nothing. It's <laughs> just like yeah. what just <laughs> happened? What just happened? Um, I love though as as somebody who's been reading through the books right now, uh, I love that they start the game off with you seeing Yennefer and Siri, and so like no matter like what kind of experience you have with the franchise, you get that these characters are significant. You understand somewhat what their relationship to Geralt is. And butts, because the Witcher is all about the sexy times. And had, yeah, they start two games butts. in a row with butts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was funny, too, because, uh, not to spoil too much of it, but they, they, they had her hair wrapped up in a towel and her back was to you, so you didn't, it's like, is that... Which one is it? <laughs> Who is it? <laughs> yeah, they were being really coy with, with her reveal. Um, and I don't really know a lot about the lore in the way that you do. So um, I didn't really understand the significance of, of Yennefer uh, being in there. Because at first I thought maybe it was Triss because you couldn't tell who yeah. it was. Yeah. And then seeing, you know, how they've kind of uh, imagined Ciri and, and, and her as a young child. Because in the screenshots we've seen her a little bit here and there. But you know, present day, and this is, you, you're going back to what she looked like in the moments that she was in the books. Yeah, so as somebody who has uh, had more experience with the franchise than I have, I want to ask you how you felt about what they've done with the combat this time around. Uh, I do feel, I feel like it, 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 it keeps up with the things that past games have had in terms of like the, the oils and, and all of that, but it does feel a little bit more immediate. It feels more like an action game in a lot of ways where you're, you're parrying and dodging a lot uh, and that stuff is responsive. Um, I did this one quest that I probably shouldn't have done yet uh, <laughs> where you know you, you at the end of it you fight a noon wraith um, and to, uh, to actually even be able to hit it you had to lay down a trap sign uh, and while it was in the radius of the trap sign then you were able to damage it. Um, but one of the guys was telling me, he's like, yeah, if you put a certain oil on your blade, then it would, like wouldn't regenerate when it went to the other phase. I'm like, oh, yeah, because I just ran in there without, I hadn't stocked up on anything. I hadn't really prepared myself. I'm just like, oh, I'm just going to do this quest. Yeah, that's my, <laughs> that's my problem, too, that you forget, especially, you know, in a long experience like The Witcher is, that there's a lot of preparation you need to do in order to do some quests. But, I mean, that's, that's RPGs. Yeah, and, well, what's interesting, though, is how much they put in the level design because that quest also had this thing where you, you jump down a well and then you swim underwater and then you come out like at the bottom of the hill um, and and so much emphasis on tracking like and, and solving uh, mysteries and things like that you're looking around at clues all the time it's it's or at least it seems like that from the slices we got yeah witcher sense did seem to be more uh played a bigger role um in, in the gameplay that i played as well and i like that in certain in a certain sense but also i think that um exploration for me is one of the things that i really love about these kind of open world games something that i'm really looking forward to um how did you find the open world aspects of the game i'm curious um, I think in like any open world game, it, it can be like a bit uh, overwhelming. So it's like, hey, okay, go up that way and you know talk to these guys, and then as you walk down the road, it's like, oh, there's a signpost with some contracts on it. Oh, there's a guy over there with the quest. There's a guy over here. Uh, one thing I thought was very really interesting though is when I completed the Noon Wraith quest, they referenced uh, like an alchemist or something that was in the town. And then that ended up being uh, like part of the main quest as well. So they're like really kind of you know trying to you know, make those pieces all sort of intertwine and interconnect. 
Uh, the other thing that stood out to me, uh, and I mentioned this in the interview as well, the faces. Did you <laughs> notice like how great the faces look and how individual every character the is? The cutscene animation in particular is really vivid, really great. I thought that they look um, really nice. I was playing on an Xbox One. I, I think it looks awesome. I think there's still some, obviously this is in the final build, there's still some texture things in the open world. Um, parts that could use a little bit more polish, but I mean, the conversations, yeah, absolutely. The detail looks fantastic. Yeah, you don't get this sense that, uh, yeah, you don't get the sense that they just like stuck some random number generator on a, a face compiler or something like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. It's like every person that you talk to you looks like it was like handcrafted, which is really nice. But I have to say, a critique, I was a little disappointed there weren't more conversation options. And maybe that's because I'm mm. just coming from playing a Bioware game that I'm like, oh, I want more conversation options and I want them to be more, you know, impactful and be different. So I, I kind of was like hoping for that because for me, if you're going to give me the chore, as some may see it, or the choice of choosing the way the conversation is going to go, I want it to have meaning and have impact yeah. and have there be a reason for it. Yeah, well, I think that there, I, I definitely saw some of that. Maybe not like a hundred different granular choices, um, but there is a, a point where, I think it was that maybe that same quest, where you could choose, well, beginning, beginning the quest, you could choose to kind of haggle for your price. Uh, but when I ended it, he was talking about, you know, like the money he was paying you with was his daughter's dowry. And it really wasn't that much money. So you have this choice of like, uh, you know, I don't really need your money, you keep the money, you know, you saved up for it. Uh, and then when I did, he gave me an amethyst instead. Uh, so I and I don't know the significance of an amethyst, but it could be more <laughs> it worthwhile could be than worth a few, more. Yeah, a few coins. Yeah, I'm interested to see how that's going to play out because one of the things the development team has been talking about with the development of The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt is that they want some of the choices that you make, whether you save a particular town from a certain monster or whether you save a person or whatever your choice is to have an impact on the larger larger meta world, how this world is constantly living on its own and doing its own things. Now, we didn't get a, a big enough slice for really to, those consequences to play out, but we did get to play a mission later in the game where you have to choose between going down one path with this female character or going down the other path with this male character. And I think you and I both chose the same path. Yeah, it sounded like most people feel at the female character because it yeah. was like well, I mean, less she's awesome. aggressive. We don't want to tell you about her because she's cool. But, she does look really cool too. Um, but I thought it was interesting talking to um, one of the members of the development team about what the other side of that quest was and just how different they were. Yeah. But he did say that the content um, isn't necessarily necessarily gated if you make one choice or the other that you can still access some of the stuff but it's just presented in a different way which right. I like because that's one of the things about RPGs that can kind of be frustrating when they block content based off your choices because they're like oh it's replayability and I'm like hey this is already like a 75 hour experience <laughs> I can't go back and play it again at least not right away right you know so yeah. I thought that, that was really interesting there was another quest I didn't I didn't uh, finish up with it but it branched off of the main quest line where there's a sick girl there, and Geralt is like, I have a potion that might help, but it could also make her go crazy, and, you know, everyone might think you're a witcher or something like that. You know, so it's, again, you know, knowing from past witcher games, uh, and especially what they're hoping to do with this one, is you can make a choice, not think anything of it, and then four hours later, oh, that was not a good choice. <laughs> right, and then what do you do? Load your save point? No, I mean, but, like, <laughs> but I think that's the thing. It's like to avoid yeah. that. It's like, no, that's, that's, that's your story now. You know, that's how it's going to play out. So, yeah. So uh, what if, what's something that you are really excited about that you noticed when you were playing today? Um, you know, I, I, think the, I think the amount of action and activity that they brought into it in terms of, you know, the horseback riding and uh, swimming and the traversal and, and jumping and that, jumping yes jumping <laughs> you know so it you know it's it's not entirely an action game it's still a lot of rpg in there but in terms of being able to explore a world i feel like yeah you you need to be more mobile in that sense and i and i think that they're you know pulling that off one thing i like that they did is nilfgaard is obviously the invader the big bad guy all that stuff but right away you walk in on this conversation that the, the garrison commander is having with somebody and you see that he's actually kind of a good guy. 
Nilfgaard the Empire is bad, but this guy is not bad. And, and, and that's, you know, and that's a classic kind of Witcher thing. Uh, but, you know, just kind of setting that tone right away. It's like, no, you don't know what good and evil is. And, and there's all kinds of messed up, mixed up things in this world. Yeah, it, it's interesting because it feels like the uh, NPCs paint these soldiers in a very specific light. So it's hard to not let that influence you. But I mean, that's also one of the great things about a role-playing game is being able to make the decisions that you would make for yourself if you were, you know, in Geralt's shoes. Like, what would you do? Yeah. So it's um, I'm I'm interested to see how it plays out. For sure. And uh, we, can, we get to wait till May now, probably. To, <sighs> I know, to a that. bummer. It's not coming next month anymore. But you know what? Polish, polish, polish is so important with an open world game. So I think we're all okay with it. <laughs> Has it gone? Yeah.